Liz. Classic mistake there. Um, hopefully you can all hear me now. Thank you, Andrew. I'm here to talk about the carbon change in professional science and the work we've been doing to help professional institutions cut their financial ties to fossil fuel companies. Next slide, please. So this is part of our responsible science campaign and a follow up to a report that came out two years ago called Irresponsible Science, how the fossil fuel and arms industries finance professional engineering and science organisations. The report called on institutions to improve their own environmental footprint and to cut their various financial ties to the fossil fuel and arms industries, whether that's via sponsorship for school education pro programs, events as corporate members or through investments. And it's the investments that we're going to focus on today. So the original report looked at 20 institutions and found that of the 15 of those that had investments, only two had investment policies with respect to fossil fuels. So the British Psychological Society excludes fossil fuels from its investments. And for that, we've given them a gold star here. And the Institution of Civil Engineers asked its fund managers to be compatible with UN principles for responsible investment. But in practice, that doesn't actually exclude any fossil fuel companies. So no stars for them. So after the report, um, we did some follow up. You've seen this um, before in Andrew's talk. Um, as a result of the report and the Geological Society's ties, SGR fellow Bill Maguire resigned and made the BBC News front page. And next slide. And also the um, Sunday Times made uh, the Royal Society made the Sunday Times. And the journalists there found out that they had a whopping 16 million invested in fossil fuels. Next slide. So since the report, we had a look to see if there'd been any progress. And we were pleased to see that actually six institutions had introduced some form of investment policy or strategy. So the Royal Meteorological Society no longer invests in fossil fuels. The Geological Society has a policy to avoid the most carbon emitting fossil fuels, so coal and tar sands, but we'll see what they do in practice coming up. The Institute of Materials, Minerals and Mining, the IOM3, doesn't have a policy, but in practice, their investments are in a fund that avoid the most carbon emitting fossil fuels. And you may, this eagle eyed amongst you may notice that the biggest investor or the, the professional institution with the largest investment fund is not on this slide. Next slide, please. So what we did next was write to the five of the scientific institutions. The Royal Society told us that they were waiting for the charity commission consultation before um, updating any investment policy. Um, the charity commission has been encouraging people to set up responsible investment policies, despite the um, responsibility of trustees to maximise financial returns of investments. And it's interesting to note that other societies did feel able to update their ethical investment policies in the meantime. So the IOP told us they're working on a, an ethical investment strategy. The Geological Society told us it's actually currently going further than its policy and isn't investing in oil and gas companies. The Royal Meteorological Society also is not investing in fossil fuel companies and the IOM3 did not re reply. Next slide. So in terms of emissions commitments, it's a similar picture in that four of the societies have either currently made pledges or plan to make pledges later in the year to set themselves targets and the Royal Society does not. As a result, next slide please. As a result of this, we wrote a blog about the Royal Society, which you can see on our website. Next slide. And we've also been speaking to the media, so there should be some media coverage coming out soon. When that's out, we'll be encouraging members of these societies to write to the membership magazines. 
to exert further pressure. And we'll also be writing to UK engineering professional organisations, both about their fossil fuel links and their links to the arms trade. And as Andrew mentioned, we've been taking our project international. And since June, we've been also will be contacting organisations in the US and elsewhere. So if you'd like to help, if you're a member of a professional organisation, please do let us know. And we have various ways that you can help us. If you work in climate as an academic scientist or engineer, please do sign the science oath. I put the link in the chat just now. And something for everyone, please do join SGR. Next slide. So thank you for listening. You can see all the letters we've written and the updates to the report on our website at slash publication slash irresponsible dash science. And please do contact me at lizk at sgr.org.uk if you have any questions that you don't get time to ask now. Thank you.